So hi, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started. And if anybody comes in later, we can just like recap them on um, what we discussed. Um, so firstly, thank you everyone for being here tonight. It's so nice to see you all. And I'm glad that God brought us here once again to all study together and to study his word. Um, Reverend Briggs, as always, uh, would you mind praying us into study today? <laughs> Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for today and uh, we thank you for how you continue to take care of us. Um, we know that all the goodness that we receive comes from your hand and we just thank you for it. We thank you, the Lord, for this circle of fellowship and uh, how you are blessing um, this Bible study as we partake in your word. Um, so we just pray that you might just continue to bless, um, to bless your people, um, bless these young lives and allow them to freely ask of you, um, any question that they have, because you invite us to, uh, pray that you might enlighten your word and, uh, continue to bless, um, Jada as she leads, um, the discussion around your word. And we'll be just careful to give your name praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Okay. So now we can move to, oops. now we can move on to our icebreaker of the night, which is an um, unscramble game. So with this game, basically there are going to be a bunch of words on the screen and you will unscramble them, but they're going to be like words related to the Bible. So do you want to play too? Okay. So we can take pictures of the screen um, since it's showing up here. So like I'll ask everyone to, yes, so I'm going to move to the next page. And this is the first, there are 20 words. So <laughs> this is the first set of words. So I'll give like, I think, two minutes for the first set of words, but everybody can take a picture of it if they can. Two. Also, I did put the answers up here, but I did not look at them, everyone, so I'm really actually <laughs> playing. No. <laughs> okay, we can set a timer for two minutes. Okay, two minutes starts now. Oh, I heard that one. Okay. <laughs> 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 Six. Oh. I don't know what that one is. He said nine. Yeah, I don't know. I've, I've seen it before, though. I think I got it. <laughs> um. 
You got it? I want to get that one right now. Wait, no. This one. <laughs> I got ten for sure. Mm -hmm. I've seen that one before. Okay, mm -hmm. well, the time is almost like let me see. That's the next one. Mm -hmm. Why they do? I'm gonna do the next one. Oh, the time is up. Okay, the time is up. Okay, so let me go back. Okay, so does anybody want to share their answers, what they got first? Oh. <laughs> oh, Alana, did you want to go? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can share mine. I got seven of them. Okay. So, number one, Isaiah, two, Judas, um, four, Abraham, five, Zachariah, mm -hmm. six, Jacob, seven, Micah, Micah, I don't know. Seven was iffy for me. And then 10, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I got one, Isaiah, two, Judas, three. I don't know. I said Andrew. Andrew, oh, that's right. Okay. Four, Abraham, five, Zechariah, six, Jacob, seven, Micah, eight. It's like Shep. She like, I know it's S H. Seven S. It's Shepherd. Yeah. Is it Shepherd? No. I thought it starts with an S H. Shepherd. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I've seen it though. I've read it, but I don't know what it is. And then um ten Jesus. So I got ten. Nine, oh, nine? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> it's like we have to just oh, oh wait, wait do the other one. yeah the second one. <clears throat> Where you wanna go? I got all of them except for eight and nine. Too. Eight and nine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get all of them? <laughs> What's eight? Eight. Oh. It's like I feel like it's an S H the start. It has the answer key up here, so we'll see it after we do the second round. Oh, yeah, let's move on to the second round. Okay, so here's the second round. And I'll set another timer for a minute 30. All right, you Yeah, so this is the next. I'm not going to set the time right now. These look harder than the other one. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm going to set the timer now. Oh, I got that one. How are you not doing? Oh my gosh, I can't. Yes, those are the tricky ones. Oh, you huh? got it. <laughs> Eight. 18 Nahum. Um, I feel like I know 18, but I don't. 
Did you get 18? You said it right. Mm -hmm. Is? Sorry. Mm -hmm. The timer was 20 seconds. I don't know what that one is. What, 13? You got 13? No, I got 13. How did you I get 13? 11. How did you get 13? Did you get 11? Yes, how did you get 13? 13. <laughs> okay, okay. So the time is up. Um, you go first. I didn't get 11, but I got the rest of them. I got Moses. Hagar, Bartholomew, oh. Elijah, Ezekiel, mm -hmm. Daniel, Nathan. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. I feel like Matthew right. and Peter. Yeah, I got all. Well, I got number one. I got, um, I got Titus. Titus. Number two, Moses. Three, I. You said Hagar. Mm -hmm. Four, Bartholomew. Five Elijah, six Ezekiel, seven Daniel, eight Nathan, Nathan, and then nine Matthew and ten Peter. But I don't, I don't know. Is it Nathan? I was thinking of Nehemiah. Oh, that is right. <laughs> Did you say Alana? Yeah. yeah, I also got Nehemiah for eighteen. <laughs> We're like, <laughs> that's smart. Okay, I did not get that. Okay, here are the answers. So, oops. Okay, so it's Isaiah, for the last one, it's Isaiah, Judas, Andrew, Abraham, Zechariah, Jacob, Micah, oh. Stephen, oh, and Thaddeus, and then Jesus. Yeah. And then it's Titus, Moses, Hagar, Bartholomew, Elijah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Nehemiah, Matthew, and Peter. So, let's see, who, who got the most right? <laughs> How did you get? I got, well, out of all of it? Yeah. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Me too. What did you get, Alana? Not as much as you guys. I think <laughs> I got like. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, <laughs> no, you're fine. Okay. Uh, in the second group, I got most of them. I think the one I missed was, um, I don't know. Okay. And then in the first group, I didn't do as well at all. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm still trying to figure out eight and nine. Eight oh, yeah. and nine for the first one? Yeah. It was Thaddeus. Oh, wait, no, yeah, Thaddeus is nine, and okay. eight is Stephen. Oh, Stephen. Stephen, or Stephen. Yeah. I think it's, Ste I don't know. Okay. Okay, so now we can move on to the recap. A uh, good job for the activity. <laughs> <laughs> now we can move on to the recap of last the last session, which was Let Go and Let God. Um, I know it's been a while since... What was it? I think it was March 7th was the last session. So just to refresh the scripture that we focused on was Ephesians 3.20, um, which reads, Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us. And um, oops. so for this recap, I wanted to focus on um, song lyrics this time. Um, so I wanted to give, I'll read it out loud and I'll give everybody Sometimes to kind of like write down or highlight some pieces of the lyrics that kind of resonate with them or just last um, the last Bible study set. Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. Okay. Hello? Yeah, I can see you now. Sorry. It was the internet. Let me go back to share my screen. I have to set it up again. Mm. How do I get back here? Let's go back to Canva. And view. 
Okay, hold on. Sorry. Am I still on Zoom? Oh, okay, we can say present. Yeah, okay, there we go. There we go. Let me share my screen again. I think I have to re record. Oh, wait, it's already recording. Okay. Yes. I thought it ended, but now it's still recording. Okay. Let me go to the left. Okay, let's go back to the recap. Okay, so sorry about that technical difficulties. So going back to the recap, um, I want to focus on song lyrics and um, I can read them aloud and, and also allow you all to like kind of absorb them and highlight or write down things that stood out to you about the lyrics in regards to letting go and um, letting God. So the lyrics read, I have to realize that it's not my battle. It's not my battle to fight. I have to know if I put in if I put it in your hands, that everything will be all right. As soon as I stop worrying, worrying how the story ends, I let go and I let God, let God have his way. That's when things start happening. I stop looking at back then. I let go and I let God have his way. Let go, let God have his way, let go and let God. So um, just opening the floor for anyone who wants to share, did any of these specific quotes or anything from the lyrics stand out to you or just did anything pop into your head of how it relates back to um, last the last Bible study we had? Um, I wasn't at the last uh, the last Bible study, but I can like okay if I like share kind of like what the lyric is. That okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um. I don't know, like, in class, like, the, earlier in the semester, like, one mm -hmm. of the things we learned was, was it was for biology, and, like, whenever you're doing stuff, like, sometimes the simplest explanation is the best one, mm -hmm. and I guess that's honestly similar to what this thing, like, the song is saying, mm -hmm. because, like, some, sometimes God really is, like, the simplest answer, like, sometimes mm -hmm. we get caught up in trying to do a hundred million different things and mm -hmm. trying to like be here, there and everywhere. But like sometimes like the simplest thing you can do is like just like to give it to God. That's very true. And I feel like that we don't often think about that. Like we make things more complicated by like overthinking things and like questioning um, the path that he's guiding us. Whereas we can just, like you said, just let it go and trust in him and it'll all be simple. That's good. No. Yeah, because we can only control so much. But we yeah. think we can control it all. Exactly. But we, yeah. we can only control so much. And so we need to let go of what we cannot control. Mm -hmm. yeah. And at the end of the day, like, his, like, what he does, he's 10 times more powerful than us. So, like, we can only do half of what he can. So the end result with him is always going to be mm -hmm. better. Um, but the question for the recap was also, since our last study, has there been an area in your life or just a specific experience, like, kind of, like Alana touched on where you let go and let God. Oh, you already did your package. Mm -hmm. oh. mm -hmm. I think I had some incidents this week or last week. I can't remember. Yeah. Mine was kind of similar to Brooke's example for the last study when she talked about like a package that she was receiving for me it was like um some of the things that I needed for like my graduation pictures they were running late and they were not like coming in time but it ended up working out because my pictures are tomorrow and, and it came yesterday so that was something I was just like I'm not going to stress about if it's here when it's supposed to be here it'll be here if not then it's out of my control okay so now we can move on to the book of the night, which is uh, Genesis uh, 32 and then verses 24 through 30. So I'm going to go. 
here. As always, um, does anybody want to read uh, the first section of verses aloud? I can read just this first one. Okay, thanks a lot. With me right now. Um, so Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as, as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, let me go for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And I can read the next few. The man asked him, what is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Jacob said, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, it is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. So now we will move to um, our typical method of breaking down the passage, which is soap. So first we'll start out with a scripture and then like the words that stood out to us, I will flip back to the verses and display them on the screen so that everybody can take another look at them. And I'll probably give you like a minute and 30 seconds to kind of read it over and let it process in your mind for you to like highlight whatever words stand out or um, just write down anything or specific verses that resonate with you. So I'm going to flip back to the first uh, slide and then I'll move on to the second after we give this like a minute. Okay. I don't know if it's going to work. Thank you. Oh, the song I was just talking about. I was saying the song that I was just talking about just came up on Shuffle. The one that I used as the example. Really? It's right here. I forgot how in the Okay, now I'll switch to the next uh, screen.
Okay, now I will allow us to focus on a specific scripture out of the passage today. Um, but the topic of today's session will be wrestling with God. Um, we'll be specifically focused on focusing on verse 29. Um, so starting off, this scripture can go so many directions and speaks volumes. But one thing that I took from it was, <laughs> I know it may sound funny, but that I, from this verse, I took that word kind of spoiled. Um, once we have a blessing coming and we keep getting like blessings on blessings, we become accustomed to the mindset that we have to always know what's coming next, where it's coming from, and when it's coming. Um, so, so specifically with this verse, it reads, Jacob said, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? And then he blessed them, him there. So um, in the scripture, he, he's asking who, what, because they say that this man is was God that Jacob was wrestling with. So in the scripture, he's asking his name. But instead of God telling him that that's, that it's him, he asked him why he has to know. And this represents us, I feel as if it does, because when things happen, we always question why or what was the cause instead of focusing on the blessing itself or what may seem as an obstacle, but is actually an undercover, undercover blessing. And, and in this situation, he's not focusing on the fact that he has God in front of him. He doesn't realize it until later because he's too busy focusing on who this person is, like, why, you know, all of those those questions that revolve around it. Um, the second thing I took from the scripture is what was that we do not have to wrestle with God. Um, our God is a forgiving God and accepting God. So as you can see in the scripture, even after wrestling with Jacob, he still blessed him because he could have said, oh, you're wrestling with me, so I'm not going to give you a blessing at all. But he didn't do that. Um, and it just shows me that Jesus has already gone before us and he was wounded by God and won a blessing for us. So even when we are, you know, faithless, um, we wrestle with God, even when we scheme, you know, tricksters, Jesus took, Jesus still took the blow that we deserve, which was um, dying on the cross for our sins. So God has already accepted us because of Jesus, even when we try to like, you know, wrestle with him in certain situations and he knows best, he still will bless us in the long end. So that's just what I took specifically from this verse. But I'll also open um, the floor up for anybody else to share what they took from it or even what they took from um, the rest of the verses in the passage. I can share what I took from another verse. Okay. Because I haven't read like this passage before. So I was kind of a little confused. I had to go back and read like the chapters before, like, before it and then like some of the ones like after it. Mm -hmm. and I kind of, what I kind of keen in on was uh, the part where he dislocated his hip. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, personally, if somebody dislocates my hip, like, <laughs> I'm not going to be like, oh, like, you're wonderful. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'm, you're dislocating my hip. <laughs> but I continued reading. I realized that the action of dislocating his hip kind of maybe helped Jacob see, mm -hmm. like, open his eyes as to like mm -hmm. that he had like God in front of him. Mm -hmm. I think you could really relate that to like life in general. Cause sometimes you need to be like a little hurt. Well, not hurt per se, but sometimes you have to go through it mm -hmm. to like, I'm aware of like what God is trying to do for you. That's kind of what I took. Yeah. From yeah. I actually never like evaluated from that like perspective. So that was really like, of what you said about how he didn't see till after and I feel like that's like a common connection with this like passage that he doesn't notice that it was God until like after the experience happened so yeah yeah I like that perspective oh, <laughs> okay, let's go to oh sorry you know, Kaya. yeah um, well I'll just say I like that perspective because it makes me think like he like when we're getting attacked we're so focused on getting attacked and mm -hmm. not like thanking god for like the bad circumstances are being attacked mm -hmm. and um like i said it before but he like god works best in weakness so sometimes he'll have to send us like in certain situations and we shouldn't be like focusing on Mm -hmm. the situation when it's God right in front of us and he's right. in the middle of it and he works best when we're like weak and like we need him mm -hmm. yeah that's very true 
Um, it also kind of reminded me that how like even when I think I'm kind of saying with what you kind of said already, Jada, but like how even when we may not be doing our best and like there, I watched this, um, it was like a devotion video and it was like when you're lukewarm with God and that it means like you're not doing really bad, but you're not doing like the best that you can. And so it kind of reminded me that like even in our lukewarm periods, God still continues to bless us. Like he's not going to take anything away from us just because we're not like worship worshiping him like at our best every day. Like he's going to take us for what we can give to him each day. Very true. Sorry, I was plugging my laptop up, but that's true, Kaya. Can you hear me? Yeah, can you repeat the last part? Sorry. I said that, um, you know, like the lukewarm period, I saw this like devotional video about like the lukewarm period, and I was kind of like saying, that even when we're in that lukewarm period, God still continues to bless us. And like, he doesn't take anything away from us just because we're not like worshiping him mm -hmm. at our best. He still continues to bless us and put a roof over our head, give us food each day, transportation, et cetera. And I feel like that's a common theme in this passage too, because I, I know Alana, you said like there's, it's kind of confusing, like with the verses just on the screen without the background. But I do know like that Jacob, before like he met God he was like a individual who would like thieve and like scheme and he was just a really a trickster um like he was still blessings from his brother and things like that but like once he met God it's kind of like the the lyrics but in in relation to the lyrics where he said once he started praying and talking to God everything felt better so like once Jacob met God, met God he started becoming a better person and knowing that like God loves him through his past and like the things that he was doing before. So, yeah. You want to? Are you good? Okay. <laughs> okay. So now we can move on to observation. Um. So in this step, we'll just observe the scripture. Like, what's the overall message? Um. Did you learn anything new, or what do you feel that God is showing you? Um. Any of these questions on the screen, you can answer. Um. Or you can just kind of, you know, we can dig deeper, and you can just say what your interpretation from um, the passage. But um, I can start, oops, I can start. Um, so in in, in, observ in observing the passage, I found that we regularly like formulate plans, like when we think about how we're going to like approach God and we try to figure out what like, you know, good deeds or like justifications for why, like, you know, just in our head, not that we openly pray it to him, but we think in our head like justifications for like, why God should forgive us. But um, I don't know, this passage just kind of taught me that we don't need to approach God in this way. Like Jacob like wrestled with him, but at the end he begged for his blessing. So it's like, we don't have to come up to him like, oh, like God, I know I th did this, like blah, blah, like, you know, kind of explaining justification for your sins at the end of the day. Um, like, like I said in the beginning, that like Jesus died on the cross for our sins and God is an, a forgiving God. So even in times where we, our past was like, maybe we didn't show a lot of faith. Maybe we were tricksters or scheming. Um, God is always going to forgive us. And he loves us at the end of the day. Like we're his like most prized possessions. So he's always going to, you know, see us through everything. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I observed. If anybody wants to share next. Um, for me, it kind of, for number six, it kind of like reminded me, I auditioned for this um, to be a spring choreographer for dance and I didn't get it. And at first I was like sad and I was like, oh, like I really want to choreograph for like my last spring concert. But then I realized how stressed that would be if I were to choreograph and that God was just trying to save me and like my mental health from that like stress and like I, like after I didn't get it I was like bummed but then like I had to check my email because I was applying for the scholarship today and I like realized oh yeah I have like a lot I need to get done before I graduate and like I don't want to lose my focus before I graduate and like yeah so yeah I, he was just saving me from trying to put my me like stretch myself in so many different directions 
Yeah. And I feel like that kind of goes back to what Brooke said, because it's like usually like we focus on the negative of our aspects or like if we're we're sitting with a problem, we focus on the problem itself, not who can help us get through the problem. Like and it's like it's kind of like you sh- how you should address your homework assignments. Like you have this assignment and you have like all these things, that's these different questions. But we go back to our notes, right, to like figure it out. So it's kind of the same in life. Like we have this problem. Why not go to God? For that same thing so i don't know that kind of reminded me of what brooke said and there's always good that yeah comes out, like what he does yeah like, it'll always be good we might not like see it now beforehand but, yeah, yeah but they're always be good mm-hmm. and we'll see it later yeah of the notes thing jada it kind of reminded me of like like i didn't before but like now i find myself like whenever i'm like stressed or like i don't know what to do or like like negative or good i'm just like god please help me like i'm having a normal conversation so yeah like i just found myself doing that like recently yeah that and that reminds me of like um is alana up here oh yeah alana i don't know if you remember it's like two maybe two bible studies ago but you were talking about that like changing your mindset like when you before you go into like a a problem that you're about to face or something like that just adjusting your mindset to like praying immediately when things you know don't go your way or you're like you're bummed out about something so it's like a kind of like it's a process itself it won't happen instantly yeah I definitely remember that and I kind of liked what uh I think Kaya said where um it kind of goes back with the song was like let go and let God like God Mm -hmm. handle and maybe not getting that opportunity was just him like being like okay like you have enough on your plate right now. Like right now you don't see it. But if you add this to it, like mm-hmm. it's like you're gonna be able to manage everything else. And that was probably like kind of maybe his way of just being like they're like other things that like that need your energy and like need yeah. your time. And like is literally just another example of like letting go and let God. Cause sometimes you don't know yeah the, the reason for what God is doing until like afterwards. It's yeah, already that's done. Like, that's kind of crazy to me too, because it's like You have this person who sees, like, he knows everything, like, our future, everything that we have ahead of us. And so he knows. And it's, like, we're still, like, wrestling. Yeah. I'm, like, (laughs) it's it's crazy because it's, like, you he can see. Like, how are you questioning your help? Like, it just doesn't make sense, like, if you think about it, really. So that's kind of, like, the mindset thing. You have to get yourself into that, like, pattern, like, I know, like, he's, like, a lamp onto my feet, so why am I, like, questioning it, you know? So. Yeah, it's kind of, like, you know those, like, glass floors and, like, when it's really high up and, like, you know there's a glass floor there, but you're still scared to step on it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or, like, if, if I was in a lecture, like, and my teacher was teaching me something, I wouldn't be, like, yeah, no, I don't think that's right. Like, I wouldn't do that. Yeah, like, so it's, like, true. it's the same energy with God. Like, you're supposed true. to trust him. Like, he knows. He's all-knowing. He knows everything. So, okay, so now I'll move on to application. Um, So basically this step is just reflecting on how you can apply these scriptures to your daily life. Um, So there's four questions below. You can pick any of them that you want or just kind of, um, you know, say an example that you could see yourself using, like what you learned from this session um, in your day-to-day schedule or just in your life. For me, it's just like the same as what I just said, like, um, kind of being like logical before I am doubtful, like really thinking about, like I said, who I'm questioning, because at the end of the day, it it doesn't make sense to question him. Um, and yeah, I just, and I also saw something like I read about in my devotional saying like, even though like we are, you know, we've given our life to Christ and we're working to like increase our faith and things like that. But sometimes you just need to pray for like God to help your unbelief because you're not going to be in all situations you're not going to never have doubt so like in those situations I've been learning to like help ask for his help and like you know helping me be strong and just not not doubt him and just help my unbelief in those situations so yeah I like that Jada and I'm gonna go <laughs> to the verse that you were highlighting where it says please tell me your name I mm-hmm. think we can apply that like we don't Yes, we can ask for understanding, mm-hmm. but also be patient yeah. and just trusting, mm-hmm. having faith in him for understanding and set like during those 
attacks or like bad circumstances instead of wrestling with him like mm-hmm. just asking why this why that yeah. like take a step back and like instead of, like be thankful and pray mm-hmm. in it instead yeah that's what I'm gonna apply my life mm-hmm yeah, I agree with what Brooke said because, um, and like I'm gonna do number three and like habits, attitudes, or changes that you need to make. I kind of like agree with what Brooke said and like thanking him instead of being like why, because I feel like in the situation like I explained earlier about not getting the choreography opportunity, I could have been like thank you from sa- for saving me from that stress mm-hmm. rather than like why didn't I get it. And so, yeah, yeah kind of, like, changing that perspective for whenever I don't get something. Yeah. And- yeah. yeah. Sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. But I agree, Kai. I think because that, that reminds me of, like, like, you know how, like, people say, like, pray for, pray to thank God in advance for the accomplishments that are, like, yet to come? I feel like it should be the same with, like, the rejections. Mm-hmm. Like, also praying for those. Because, like, I feel like we also like in situations where always we kind of focus on the fact that like it's positive to think like everything there's never going to be any issues in your life like no matter how big how small but in reality there may be some things that like God either allows it to come our way or he sends it so that's just like realistic so I think just getting used to that and just praying for you know those those moments in advance so that when they do come you're well equipped to like get through them things like that. Um, I really liked what you said, Jada, about being logical and not doubtful. Like mm-hmm. I really I wrote that down because <laughs> really like as like a student and stuff like that, that like you have so many goals. Like we're young, we have so many goals that we set for ourselves. And sometimes when it's not our time, it's not our time. And sometimes it's really hard to accept that and mm-hmm. doubt ourselves, even though it just honestly just might not be our season yet. Mm-hmm. So I being like logical instead of like doubtful because sometimes we set par- start to doubt ourselves mm-hmm. and we probably that's that's very true alana because then i feel like that comes from attaching ourselves to those like accomplishments mm-hmm. or goals that we have or those plans like mm-hmm. you can like aspire things in life but don't get so attached to it because when it doesn't happen then that's when like you start to kind of reflect on yourself as a person it's like oh I'm this, I'm that, all that mm-hmm. kind of things. But if you have these like goals that you're set, that you set, and you're like, okay, if it's in God's favor, like that's all. Like I want these to happen. If it's God, if it's in God's favor, if it doesn't happen, it's fine. Then it can kind of like help that. Like it helps your self confidence because in those situations, if it doesn't happen, then yeah. it doesn't bother yeah. you. Yeah. yeah that's mm-hmm. So I'm gonna write that down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So if anybody, is everybody good on the applications? Does anybody have anything else to say? Okay, so now I'll move on to the prayer of the night. We're kind of ending. Oh, no, we're ending right on time. Okay, so um, may you bow your heads and close your eyes. Lord, thank you for bringing us all here tonight for yet another Bible study. Please touch every individual under the sound of my voice right now. You know our worries, our deepest anxieties. Lord, please cast these away and help us to increase our faith. Please help us in moments of our disbelief and our in our doubt. Help us not to wrestle with your will and your way, but to have comfort in knowing that under your favor and guidance, all things will work out. God, we confess to you that sometimes our worries seem too big. We don't see a way out of our current situation and your timing seems differently than what we would have chosen. But we know and believe that no matter how much we've struggled, you alone can see the big picture. And we praise you that you are all that you are with us through it all. Help us to hear your voice through the difficult days. Help us to set our eyes on you alone. Help us to keep moving in the direction that you are leading us. Thank you for the reminders that through every weakness and hard place, your strength is displayed in beautiful ways throughout our lives. We can't do it on our own, Lord. We're so freshly aware of that, but you can work your great miracles in us and through us. Thank you that this battle will never have the final say over our lives. And because of your power and compassion, we will come through to the other side with greater perseverance, stronger faith, and deeper awareness of your presence with us. 
Thank you that you are fighting us, that you are fighting for us and will bring us out stronger than before. I ask these blessings in your name. Jesus, amen. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, so now I want to move on to announcements. Anything exciting that you want to share um, or anything that you're looking forward to going into this weekend? Easter. Right yeah, there. I am looking forward to Easter. Yeah. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to Easter. And um, I'm able to do like the welcome for the service tomorrow. So mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, I'm looking forward to Easter. Sunny weather starts tomorrow. Yeah. So. It's going to be like 80 degrees. Yeah. So nice. Mm, one more month left of school. I know. Graduation. I know. And your Kai, has, your Kai has two. Like two months, not one. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Kai. I have basically one because I get out in May and then I'm out until graduation. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So you don't have classes? Oh, wait, you don't have exams. Yeah. Oh. Your grad picks tomorrow. Oh, yeah, my graduation pictures are tomorrow, so I'm excited about that, too. Oh, yeah, and UNC is about to beat Alabama today. <laughs> <laughs> Rob was like, yeah. And state is going to be <laughs> he's like no maybe we will okay alana or deja do you have anything i have a biochem exam next week so live <laughs> unfortunately it's gonna be me my books and god a lot of prayer <laughs> that's all you or in a prayer after i'm gonna keep it like that on thursday <laughs> Like, you could definitely put that in the prayer request, and, and we got you on that yeah. one. Yes, please. Hey. Asia? <laughs> I don't have anything. I have a final exam tomorrow. Okay, yeah. It's really exam tomorrow. Exam tomorrow, okay. Yeah. You're starting your new thing. Rob? Nothing exciting? <laughs> UNC. UNC game, yeah. <laughs> Do you all have anything? Rob's a UNC fan? Yeah. Yeah, he he likes UNC. <laughs> She's wearing a UNC. Yes, yeah, wearing a jersey. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Do you want to share Instagram? Oh, oh the name okay. of the... Okay. All okay. playing. Hello, everyone out there. <laughs> uh, but the name that I suggested you guys call yourself is simply FBC Gen Z. Like it rhymes. All our Generation Z. Yeah, and I like First that. Baptist Church. Yeah, you like that? Yeah. So now we have a name. <laughs> so that's exciting. Um, I really like that. Yeah, I like that. That was yeah. really nice. <laughs> yeah. And if anybody is a graphic designer, and oh yeah, we can get some t-shirts, um, mm -hmm. logo yeah. or something. Else like that. Yeah. Oh yeah, that'll be good. Brooke, I don't need to design. I can buy. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right, and now we're gonna move to the prayer request form. So as always, you can scan the screen if you have any prayer requests. Um, but this is also in the um, Google Drive, so you can go to this and resource it throughout the week, you know, throughout the month, anytime you want, you can go in and, um, you know, put a request in for a prayer. Um, but that is all for tonight. I hope that you all enjoyed the Bible study and that you took some new learnings from the passages, and um, I hope that you all have a blessed weekend and a blessed Easter. All right. Bye. Bye. Good night. Oh, wait, Ada, do you know oh. if you're doing, um, I guess it's not next Thursday, but like Thursday after next, I probably, if you are doing it, I probably would be able to come in person. I just, I had oh, work today. I should have, I should have announced that too. <laughs> <laughs> I'll in take it. Yeah. 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 We're probably going to like start doing them like in person now that we've like established like the Zoom community. Mm -hmm. So it's probably going to be like in person instead of zoom but it'll also always be that zoom option like this while we're in person but yeah it'll be in person again the thursday afternoons all righty thank you yes and food we have food too, so <laughs> have a good night
You too. Bye. Thank you.